Some of the important milestones in environment and environmental protection have been considered under various agreements and efforts. So in this lecture, we would be talking about some of the major ones, for example, Montreal Protocol for ozone. Then we have Rio Summit. We do have Kyoto Protocol for greenhouse gas emissions, the Paris Agreement, and importantly, the Environment Protection Act 18, uh, 1986. Sorry. So all these topics we would cover one by one. So let's begin with the very first thing, which is the Earth Summit. Now, Earth Summit took place in 1992. And this was part of the UN Conference on Environment and Development and prior was what was called as the Stockholm Conference which was in 1972 and this was the UN Conference on Human Environment. Now this Earth Summit had three components. The first component was the uh, climate change under UNFCCC which is the United Nations Federation for Climate Change. The next was the biodiversity under CBD and the last is sustainable development. Under sustainable development, we'll talk about three important aspects. Agenda 21, Rio Summit and Statement of Forest. Under biodiversity, three again important protocols which are the Nagoya Protocol, the Nagoya Genetic Resource One, the Cartagena Biosafety and the Archi Targets and then under climate change, Kyoto Protocol and Copenhagen Accord. Besides these, we would also talk about some major international uh, conventions. Also, we would talk about Montreal Protocol and uh, Paris Agreement in uh, this section separately. So to begin with, in 1972, as we said, the Stockholm Conference took place and this was when the United Nations Environmental Program was established. Now it had two important components, Earth Watch and Un Global Environment Outlook. Earth Watch under the UNAP is a surveillance on environment and Global Environment Outlook is a report which is published by United Nations Environment Program. The seventh version the seventh report of it was started in 2022 and will be published in 2026. In 83, the Brutland Commission came into existence and this Brutland Committee actually talked about sustainable development. That means using the present resources in such a way that it is useful for the future generations as well. The next is in 1987, the Brutland Report under Our Common Future, as it was called as came into existence with a major goal of socio-economic development and this was to prevent environmental deterioration. So again, a very important concept under the Brutland Report was the goal of our common future. Now, as I said, under, under the Earth Summit, sustainable development, three goals. One was Agenda 21, the Rio Summit and the Statement of Forest. So let's focus on those one by one. So under Agenda 21, very, very important. It was voluntary. It is an action plan of United Nations and it's non-binding. Now, what does Agenda 21 talks about? As the name suggests 21, that means it refers to the 21st century and it can be executed at the local, national and global levels. And its main focus is sustainable development, using the resources in such a way that those are useful for the future generations to come. Now, once we have this idea of Agenda 21, what are the steps? We first of all have a action plan, we apply that action plan, measure its effects, encourage the process, organize the running, train the teams, increase the partnership, organize the uh, members and then have a common diagnosis with the strategic themes, how to work around the agenda and what could be the implications for the generations. The next was the Rio Declaration. Now Rio Declaration came with third generation rights and 27 principles. So in 2002, Rio plus 10, which talked about the full implementation of Agenda 21 and Rio plus 20 in 2012, which talked about renewing the political commitment and for a 20 year gap period between 9, uh, 1992 to 2012. Now, what were the major goals under Rio Declaration? The major goals were reducing the poverty, bringing in clean energy, sustainable development and under this Rio Declaration, there was a 49 page document which was released that said 
future we want now under brutland commission it was our common future don't get confused here it is future we want and there were seven priority areas which were declared under rio declaration what were those job energy cities food water ocean and disaster so again the list of seven priority areas under rio declaration are extremely important the next is the statement of forest principles now this was the first global consensus on forest and how the developed nations should work in order to maintain the green environment so how do we develop forest based on our socio economic needs how can forest provide and help us with our financial needs and in 1994 there was a working group on criteria and indicator for conserving and managing the uh, temperate and the boreal forest now this was again a major initiative that is started in 1994 and hence is really important now the next came under the bio safety the three protocols the cartagena protocol then we have the archi principle and the nagoya principle so let's talk about the cartagena protocol first now cartagena relates to bio safety now under the uh, conference of parties fifth this cartagena protocol was opened for signature in 2000 it was ratified in 2003 and finally in 2004 it came into existence here one very important thing was brought and that was living modified organisms now these living modified organisms were were nothing but the organisms that were modified by the use of biotechnology and how animals or biological uh, organisms flora or fauna that is plants or animals could be translocated or moved from one boundary to another for example we say uh, cheetah has been brought to india right so trans boundary movement and handling was another important thing that was part of it and establishing a bio safety clearance house for example if you land on to the hawaii island nations uh, at one of the islands for example moi they would check whether you are not bringing in alien species any plant species or animal species so that would be a kind of check at the entry ports now this is to ensure that bio safety clearance is done neither you are bringing some unique species nor you are taking some unique species so those have to follow certain protocols now it would also balance the public health against the economic benefit and there would be a precautionary approach in principle 15 of the rio declaration The next is Aichi targets. Now Aichi targets were held at Nagoya in Aichi, Japan, and this was under Conference of Parties ten. Cartagena under Conference of Parties five. Very very important. Now again, this was a biodiversity protection target. but this had a 10 year framework from 2011 to 2020 and this was considered as short term for a strategic plan of biodiversity long term by 2050 right so there are 20 targets which have been given in five sections of archi targets what are those five sections the first section addresses any kind of biodiversity loss the second section aims to reduce the pressure on biodiversity and promote sustainable development The third talks about protecting the species, maintaining the genetic diversity, and safeguarding the ecosystems. The fourth talks about benefiting uh, to the benefits being percolated to everyone from the biodiversity, and the last talks about everyone's participation, that is, participatory planning and capacity building. So these five sections, each of them had four goals, and therefore uh, ta four targets, and therefore twenty targets in all, which were laid down under the Archi target under Conference of Parties ten. Right? Remember again, Cartagena Protocol under Conference of Parties five. Now. The next is Nagoya Genetic Resource Protocol. It came into existence in 2014, and it talks about the equitable sharing of benefits that comes because of the use of genetic resources. So let's say this is one of the genetic resources that you are using. So it should have equal and uh, fair distribution to country A, B, C, D, for example. Now. the access and the benefit sharing uh, clearing house now this is a facility which brings in transparency and a proper monitoring it also creates legal certainties that exist so this is what is called as nagoya genetic resource protocol the id 